And welcome back to part two of Positive Media Coverage. If you missed part one, be sure to go back and check that out. We covered a lot of ground. Now, in part two, we're going to jump right back in with Ryan Ferran and Amber Nuvali from Arcadia Unified School District and pick up this conversation exactly where we left off. We hope you enjoy. So the old school press release is still relevant. Absolutely. Yeah, and to add on to that, so in addition to press releases, we do media advisories to let media even know that we're hosting events. Great. Um, and we have, it's almost like a compact press release where we have that really compelling headline. I always, when I think about how we get media out as opposed to maybe some other folks uh, in our neighboring communities, is we have a very compelling headline. We put that bold up top, especially for a media advisory like for high school graduation. Yeah. Tons of high schools are graduating every summer, uh, you know, leading into June, but we, we take the time to work with our counselors at the high school and say, what are some of the statistics of this graduating class that are super unique that would get media out to cover and talk to our valedictorian or talk to some of our um, graduates? So I think even a media advisory, too, is really important to, to have in your toolbox to let folks know that there's an event and make it very easy. Let them know the times that they will be available for interviews, um, the, lo the specific location, things like that. That's really good. It's a good point. So you don't have to wait for the media. You can call a media advisory and let them know. Uh, as Amber's talking about, graduation is a great example she just gave us. Um, we also, she mentioned the valedictorian. So we have, tell them we're going to have availability, media availability with our valedictorian every year. She's going off to Harvard, Stanford, whatever. So if you're looking for, to talk to a high-level graduate, what they did, they're going to be available right before graduation. You can get the interview, and then you can cool. stay and get 10 minutes of B-roll before graduation. Next level thing, too, is you can call a press conference. If you have good news, <laughs> you call the press conference. And you say, because sometimes, yeah. like we've had in the past where we've had three kids ace the SATs. Yeah. We got uh, two princesses named in the Rose Parade. Yeah. Uh, these, are, these amazing things where we know there's going to be media interest. So instead of trying to coordinate, pull the kid out of class, get the principal there. We're going to do a press conference. We're going to all do it at 12 o'clock at lunch at the high school. Invite the media, set up the press conference. You got the lights. You do So you can call a press conference. You have good news um, and, and say no one comes, right? Yeah. But Worst case scenario, they send the photographer and that's it. Like, right. Hey, you, you still got a picture in the paper. But you can invite the student groups, the mm -hmm. student journalism groups, the newspaper, the video team, the news team, some interns if you have them. Um, and make it a big deal. And even if it's just a few of the, of the local high schools and maybe one from a weekly or whatever it is, the students still get the experience yeah. of getting their moment in the, shunt, uh, in the, in the sun. You're going to get them photos and videos yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So you can be proactive, as Amber said. Send out a media advisory. Send out a uh, you're doing a press conference yeah. and invite the media in. And you've got content for your own social. You can make a longer form format video out of it or a short form if you're on TikTok or Instagram, whatever. So that's great. That's a really good tip. You can call your own press conferences. Um, <clears throat> what about the, the press release? All right, so you, you do the hard work of doing the press release, just since we're kind of talking about press releases. What else do you do with that? Where else do you put that content out in the world besides just trying to send it to media? Oh, we definitely archive it on our website. Okay. So we have it categorized by school year, and we put a link. We add the press release onto our page. It's already all set up because we have the photo that we want to use. We have the content. Um, and then we link it there. We have a news section on our homepage that then is just, oh, this is a news article. So we have it there. We put it prominently on any school or any school's website that we have in our district that the story pertains to. So that way it's getting constant traction. Um, and then we can just post it on our own social media as well. Great. Yeah, no press release. It, it, is, it is tough because you send out press release. You put a lot of time into it. We can talk about video press releases if yeah. you want as well. But as Amber said, no press release goes wasted. Right. Even if it doesn't get picked up by the media, we all have websites. You put the story out there, put it all over your website. You put that link on the social. So it's not a waste of time, even if it doesn't get picked up by the media. That's awesome. I love that. Now, can you talk to me a little bit about how you build your media context, that list? So you're going to do a press conference, who do you call? How do you get the word out on that? Talk to me through that process. What does that look like? So it's a slow process. I mean, it, it takes years to accumulate a big. We're in LA, the second largest media market in the country, which I love because there's so much opportunity and there's so much media and there's, there's a lot of opportunity to get your stories out there. 
But you know, the first thing to do is just go to the local news websites and find out. They most all of them will have a contact news teams. Uh, so there'll be a main email which will go to the news desk where there's assignment editors that you'll never see on TV, but they're really important people okay. that are organizing all the local stories that day. The assignment editors. So the assignment okay. editors are the people you really want to contact, look for their contact information. But it'll usually be like a news at ABC7 or news at NBC4 uh, email address which is great. If you can get the assignment editor or find out who that is, their email as well, that's very important. The producers, executive producers too, getting their contact information is huge. So when they somebody emails you back, so say you send an email to NBC4, to news at NBC4, okay. somebody emails you back, the assignment editor or producer, yeah. you take that email that. and you put that right in your contact list, okay. right? When reporters come to stories, whether it's yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent, you get their contact information. Grab you the give card. their grab their card every time. Add that to your list. Um, so it's a slow build, but every opportunity, every interaction you have with the reporter mm -hmm. is an opportunity to get another contact information. And then ask them, ask them, is there somebody else like because they work Monday through Friday, so they don't care about your Saturday. Arcadia Festival band story that happens on Saturday or Sunday. Okay. So they're not going to, so you can send them that press release and they're like, I'm not working not Saturday. Working but so who's your assignment editor? Who's your weekend assignment editor? Big tip. Who's okay. your webmaster? Like, and so sometimes at one particular station here in LA, a lot of the times they wouldn't air our story, but they would put it on their website. That's cool. And they had a webmaster that I had a relationship with cool. where we could say, hey, can, if you have time for this on your website, that's great. you can link back on your social media that you were covered by such and such media outlet, at, and it was just uh, them posting your story on, online. Exactly. Wonderful. So it's a slow build, but any any interaction, and sometimes it, it, it feels a little awkward when you're asking for a card when they're there for something. but. Yeah. They're there, they're professionals, and they understand. And you you want their contact information. Yeah. Even if they're doing a crisis, they're at your school doing a crisis, something bad happened, and yep. they're there. You want their contact information, because say they're there at 8 o'clock, their store's going to air at 11. Yeah. Something develops or something changes, or you guys are putting, you're cl closing down school tomorrow. Yeah. You want their contact information to Big get time. that in before 11 o'clock, so that word gets out to the community. Big time. And I've never had a reporter not eagerly hand me their card. Oh, for sure, right? Hey, can, I, can I get your card? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right here. Exactly. Um, you know, I'll say too that one of the things I used to do a lot on social when I would have reporters come out and they covered positive stuff, I would tag that reporter on social media and I would just give Perfect. them a shout out. Like, Absolutely. You know, Abby, thanks so much for coming out and covering graduation at Oceanside High School this, you know, this last weekend or whatever. So uh, that's another cool little, little tip. And then I always found uh, they would take my calls the next time, or at least respond to my emails. If it wasn't a story they were gonna cover, they'd at least tell me, you know? They, they gave me that courtesy because they know that I'm also looking out for them and I appreciate the work. That's a, actually, that's a really good tip, especially in smaller markets where they're, it's very competitive, they're yeah. looking to get it. So if a station wherever in the country is a little bit smaller, and again, it's a, it's a competitive market, they're going to appreciate the fact that you're also promoting them. Yeah. So they know more clicks. They know coming to your district is yeah. going to get them more clicks. Because another thing is we do, and I, I know you've done this too, is in our email blast to mm -hmm. all of our parents, all of our students, all of our staff and community, which is you know close to twenty thousand people. Yeah. We put links to their yeah to their stories <laughs> totally. on their websites. Yep. That's pretty valuable. That's so a big deal. it's a good point you made. Yeah. Um, all right. So how do you how do you track the media coverage? So you, you, you talked a little bit about, uh, you know, you post these stories to your, your homepage. There's a link on your homepage to these stories. Um, really cool. But how do you know when you're being covered? How do you track these stories? Are there anything, you, anything you're doing there? We use two primary tools. One is easy, free, and really good. I know what it is. It is. Google. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Google fans. Google, yeah. yeah, Google alerts. And... And look, uh, you can set it up different ways. Yeah. You can immediate notifications once a day. Um, I always should do media in case something's posted somewhere. Will right. you get real estate listings yes. and will you get stuff like that? Or schools that are unrelated to yours because they have the same name. Exactly. <laughs> so we get that all the time, but it still picks up a lot of stuff that we weren't aware of on some random blog or some, some alumni was on some cable yeah. network in Ohio and we're like, oh my gosh, this guy's doing great things. It turns you out to be a know. great story. The other one that we pay for and have been really happy with over the years is TV Eyes. Okay. And that 
if you're familiar with it, kind of scrolls all, I don't even know how it does it, it's genius, but it scrolls all the TV stations. So you put in keywords just like you would with Google Alerts. Yeah. If something airs and it's in the transcript of that news station, and most all of them are, um, it'll pop up as an alert like Arcadia okay. High School was mentioned on Comcast in wow. Philadelphia. And that. so then you can download the video clip. And it's great because we, we used to, I basically iPhone and recording the yeah. news and begging the news station, What's like, oh my on? God, can you send me that clip? <laughs> the reporters, reporters like, oh, you're like the ninth person that wants this clip and they get annoyed with you. But TBI is, you can just download it yourself. Awesome. It's really good quality and TBI's is great. Okay, so Google free, TBI's paid. Yes, and I'm just gonna add to that, the benefits of it as well is we can organically post these videos onto our social media as opposed to posting really? a link, oh. um, which helps just even more, get more yeah, eyes on that traction. Mm -hmm. And then we post these clips onto our YouTube channel because sometimes the news outlets will take it down or archive those stories. That's true. But we always have them now on our YouTube, on the YouTube channel. channel. And what a great way to boost content on YouTube channel. Definitely. Keeping that platform relevant. And yes. there's there's media monitoring services that I, that I think there's some good ones. We don't use them, but they also, some give you a, a estimated value of the news coverage and impressions. Just be careful with some of those because yeah. some are, I've noticed in the past when I've gotten demos or like this, this an Arcadia mentioned, it got this many views and it wasn't even close to it. Yeah. So just be careful with, the vet, of, vet the product that you're you're seeking to use exactly sure. but those are the two we homework. use and really like that's cool that's good to know so <clears throat> what about then you had mentioned earlier the kicker and i know this is a technique that i stole from arcadia i don't know a few years back i borrowed from which, which one the, yeah, which lip. one that's a long well, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery so it's great <laughs> the video press release Ooh, yeah. huge i love this one Talk to me a little bit about the video press release, the concept, how you're doing it, maybe how you're editing the videos, how to edit it for media outlets, you know, providing the, 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 the suggested script. Kind of walk me through the video press release because this, this takes press release like six levels up. This is a great strategy to use in probably most markets. The evolution of journalism throughout the past decade we see something now on TV news that we didn't see 15 years ago, and that is cell phone video. Yeah. Whether it's User a, submitted. Yes. Yeah. Whether mm -hmm. it's a fire in an apartment building that Susie shot even, you know, vertically the yeah. wrong way, yeah. and it's grainy, and it's from three blocks away. It's news. always grainy and from three blocks away and blurry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and news stations are going to air it. Yeah. And so... Knowing that and knowing they're short on staff, most news stations, you know, they don't have a photographer sitting around waiting to go do stuff. They're all busy. Um, we had the idea, like, let's send them the video. We're pretty good videographers. We can send it to them. iPhones are now so good. But so you can send a video press release, include the video of the event. Now, there's some next level strategies that you want to incorporate so it actually has a higher probability of getting picked up okay, by the news outlet. So you want to shoot the video and edit it. You mentioned editing mm -hmm. in the format that most news stations do. Okay. So news stations don't use music on their video. No. Mm -hmm. They don't use transitions. Right. They don't use text on their video. It's all straight cuts. They use shot sequencing. You can Google that. Um, but send them no more no more than a minute of video okay because they're going to use don't seconds. send them a youtube video from the three hour performance and be like oh here's video yeah chop it up for them in one minute just in the format they would do and then even go as far as writing a suggested script okay. for them a 40 second script where they can go through and either take that take out a couple lines if it needs to be shorter mm -hmm. and make it easy for them to take the script Download the video. So also ask them. We use we transfer, and also now YouTube okay. is so easy to download from. Um, so they can get the video fast. They have a script, and they can plug and play it. So good. if you can shoot good video, send it in the correct format. Video press releases. We have had several of ours picked up. The stations like it because the video is good. They yeah. don't have to send a photographer an hour through LA traffic, yeah. and they have a good story. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I love the, the video press release. It's huge. And 
it's so easy to do because you aren't doing any editing at all. No. You, you just go into maybe a longer format video, like like you said, straight cuts, which just means one clip to the next clip, and you're basically just providing them B-roll, and then even giving them, here's what you can, here's your script, here's what you can say right over the top, you're in, you're out. That's a good point. The editing is actually faster it's, this it's way. Just it's just straight cuts, yeah. nothing fancy. Don't worry about putting it dissolves. Don't worry nope. about the audio. And uh, it's a pretty basic process. Well, and to add to it, it um, an event came to mind that Ryan was just, he was at one year. We had a Pops concert at the Arboretum in Arcadia. Yeah. And the Pops concert features our student musicians from Arcadia High School. And there were peacocks that oh, yeah. we are known I for in Arcadia. Yeah. And they were just walking all through, through, squawking, so adding to the music and ambiance. And Ryan was there just because he was there. He took video of it and he did a video press release just to, you know, shout out yeah. our musicians and something funny that might get picked up by the news. And sure enough, it got picked up. And and it's just, it's great. It's fun, funny content. But it also is saying, hey, this is Arcadia High's musicians. Look at them and look at these venues that they get to perform in. So In Arcadia, so cool. a peacock is not a story. But if you don't live in Arcadia, because we're used to them in the streets, they're on this cool campus, so they're everywhere. And it's super cool. And so a lot of news stations picked that up and it was simple to do. So... Really great tip about that video press release. I've used it. I love it. I'm hearing that you peeps have used it as well because, again, I borrowed <laughs> it from you. Um, yeah, it is, it is a really great and effective, really easy, efficient way to share what you're already doing. So you're already out there at yeah. the events. You're already filming. You already have the B-roll you're probably using in your own projects. Pushing it out to your local TV station with a script right up is, is really simple. So let's talk about then local media that's one aspect what about when we have that national media or even international attention talk me through what that looks like well matthew <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're fortunate enough to have some experience with national media and there's actually if people really want to dive deep we have a presentation that dr bernal's doll and i've done at calspros and some regional events that's on the school pr podcast you can listen to the whole thing yep. but in short um Got a call one day from ABC. I assumed it was ABC 7 local, okay. which is still a big deal. Yeah. But it was not ABC local. It was ABC out of New York. And uh, they were interested in doing a story. And so, oh, that's interesting. Who's the reporter? And ended up the reporter was Diane Sawyer. Yeah, that's a big deal. So that escalated <laughs> a little bit pretty quickly. And um, so we, we went through this whole process. Okay. And a uh, big story turned out – because. A, Dr. Bernal's doll is amazing. And that's the other thing. We had a great success doing that. And Dr. Bernal's doll was the one. Amber and I prepped him, but he, he was the one on camera, lights on him, and he had all the pressure on him. Superintendent, our kitty unified. Yes. Dr. Bernal's doll. Yeah. Yes. Calspra, superintendent of the year last mm -hmm. year. You may or may not know him, but he's, <laughs> he's amazing. And I, so if, if I get an opportunity to do national news and I'm in another district, I'm not so comfortable, I may not have done it. I know he's an amazing speaker. He's a brilliant guy. I knew he would go over the prep, and he's and and it was something that he cares about deeply. He's very passionate about. So, whatever it was, uh, I, I knew he would do a great job. But it is a different level. It's going yeah. to be seen by millions of people. Um, the first version of the story they did was seen by, uh, I forget the number, 16 million people. Wow. Part two was seen by, I think, four or five million people. So it's a huge deal. Bringing, You're not just sticking them in front of the camera. No. So a lot of prep goes into that. Yeah. And um, so the people that involved, even the families that we were referring back to, the first thing we did is if they want us to do it, we'll do it. If they don't, we won't. So it's all about the family and the students in your community. So the first thing I would advise is work on terms with the media. Okay. Like they wanted him in the story so bad because he's an expert on it. He handled it so gracefully. We went through a huge ordeal with this story. And so they were willing to fly all the way from New York to wow. do it in our backyard so we could have it at the location we wanted. And so there's a negotiation of who's going to be involved. And we didn't want to go, you know, have a differing opinion from our own community, a part of the piece. Right. So we would tell them if you're going to have somebody in our own community that is differing or upset, we're not going to argue on national TV with somebody in our own community. Right. We'll have feedback forms and do stuff like that. So, you know, we told them right away, here's some of the parameters. So that's my first advice is... If they want you on, you know, you can 
ask for guidelines and parameters. Absolutely. So then the other things, as you start getting deeper, is okay. You start to need to get prepared. Mm. Your your talking points. Go over the talking points. Rewrite them, and then we go as far as doing mock interviews. Great. So we'll, you know, Amber and I will play Diane Sawyer. We'll grill. We'll grill Dr. Van Alstal, and we will do it like the hardest way possible. So we had him actually in our studio, lights in his face, we're okay. not telling him the questions ahead of time. Okay. And we're just saying like, okay, this, let's go through this, answer them the best you can. This is live TV, there's no editing, there's no going to your talking points. So he needs to re go over the talking points, know them, yeah. know everything about them. So. So we do the mock interview, make it very uncomfortable for him. <laughs> we watch the mock interview. Mm -hmm. analyze. We yes. analyze the oh mock boy. interview. We rewrite the talking points okay. based on the mock interview. And so as a reporter too, and whether you're a former journalist or not, you're in the PR field, you play an important role as to anticipate what the questions would be. Yeah. So prepare him for all questions. So that's what we did and that's what people that are watching this can do is like, okay, what do we think the potential questions are? What are those tough questions? Ask him now so we can start thinking about those because sometimes people won't want to say like the tough question, but you know it's coming. Yeah. So ask it and think how they're going to answer it appropriately. So we asked all those tough questions that we thought they could possibly ask. We were pretty good about that. We watched his video, we did other things. We went as far as like wardrobe, makeup. Mm -hmm. do, do we bring our own? Absolutely, we're bringing lint rollers there. We're yeah. talking wardrobe, but what is everyone else wearing? You know, I it's even important. had this uncomfortable conversation with him where I said, you may want to bleach your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't because he doesn't have beautiful white teeth. Okay, let's it's just because, make that clear. No, because I know Diane Sawyer has beautiful, beautiful white yeah. teeth. And so when I first thought they were doing the story, I thought it was going to be Diane Sawyer, Dr. Van Alstall right here. It turned out to be a different format with a lot more people. Okay. So I was like, you don't want the contrast of somebody no. that, you know, bleaches their teeth every other really day. Really polished. Yeah. And, yeah. And then, so we went over just detail after Dude. detail, so much as far as I think Amber had the idea, let's bring a sweat rag in case he's sweating mm -hmm. or perspiring so we can give it to him and bring water in case it's not there. So being super diligent about all that. So you want to go through the interview, make it hard and comfortable. So when he gets the interview, he's felt like he's done it before. Yeah. It's nothing new, it's not surprising. So that's the meticulous nature of getting somebody prepared for a big interview. That's really good and, and controlling that is to the extent that you can. Some of those things you mentioned, the wardrobe, lint rollers, like making sure people are prepared. Um, if you can control the space, the lighting, like some of those things, I know that I've had, you know, reporters want to come out and do stories and maybe it's a, it's, it's not a positive story. Right. And I know that I could either shy away from that and just let that happen. But I know the backdrop they're going to use is just going to help them a lot. Yeah. Or I can try to control that as much as possible. Hey, come on down to our district office. Let's yeah. talk outside, you know, yeah. where it's really beautiful in the garden or something, you know, yeah. so um, trying to control that as much as possible is, is, is a really big tip, and that helps a lot. I think the asking the hard questions, really good tip there, because that is something I can see maybe you shy away from, especially if you're in the position of trying to prep a superintendent or a board president or something, and you might be a little intimidated by that. You've got Diane Sawyer coming to town, and you might not want to step into the field and, and just start asking those difficult questions. But I can only imagine how much more comfortable um, Dr. Van Asdal was having gone through that process and then getting to the point where he's sitting down in front of the cameras. It's got to be huge. And I, we had a lot of difficult conversations with the producer about the details of the day and, and who's going to be involved and how they're going to be involved. And so we went back and forth. I even went so far to ask for final editing rights wow. of ABC 2020. <laughs> what did they say? And so there is some discrepancy on this piece, but in my mind, and I'm pretty sure I'm correct, I was once given, okay, you can have final rights to the editing and we'll show you the piece before it airs, which journalists almost never, never do. do. Mm -mm. Right. But it doesn't hurt to ask. And so I said, what if somebody, because they were bringing in all people from all over the country, which we knew had differing opinions. We didn't want to be in this theatrical thing. We said, if yeah, this is not... Yeah, down and Right, so... Negative. And we trust Diane Sawyer and ABC yeah. 2020, they're journalists. 
but we didn't want to be a part of something that wasn't going to benefit students. And so if I started to see an aspect of the story and this shoot evolve that I didn't think was beneficial, I was pushing back and saying, I don't think this is going to help kids and that's what we're here to do. I know you have a story to do and ads to sell and let's not forget, I love journalism, I'm a journalist and there's pure journalism, but at the other side of it, it's a business to sell advertisement and to make space, yeah. money. So they have a, a tricky job too where they need to do journalism, but they also need to do journalism that the sells, sells and Gets people views. buy ads. So there was difficult conversations that at one point, and Dr. Benalso reminds me of this, I said, mm. it's off. I told Ooh. them, we're done, we're like not doing it. Day, really? Like a day or two before the shoot. Really? It was, yeah, it was intense. Yeah, so if you have leverage, use it. And it wasn't like I was trying to use leverage or it was just like right. our core mission is to respect the students and to advocate for more students mm -hmm. and to honor this family. Anything outside that, it's not worth it to us. So that's the lens. And once we made that decision, let's work with if The family wants us to do it and this can help students. Everything else was guided by that. Okay. So it was clear for us. So telling them no, like I don't care that she's flying out tomorrow we're not doing it if that's the case was an easy decision for us that's great well then another question i have is uh, from the time that you found out that they were interested in this story to the date of filming approximately you don't have to pull this number out exact but how much time did you have to prep we had a few weeks actually okay, a couple weeks which was good the more so we had some time on that the more <laughs> the scary part was so we do the shoot we think it goes well there's a secondary shoot that we Again, you can listen to the podcast for the whole story, but that happened. And so you think it went well, you're not sure how they're gonna edit it, What? because you're there for hours, it's only you know a 10 minute yeah, segment, right? Sure. So the most nerve wracking period was the time from after the shoot until it aired, yes. which is like three or four weeks. So we're sitting there losing bullets, years yeah. off our yeah. lives going, how is this? And then you start to, then you see the first promo like coming up and then Dr. Van Alstel, and you can see, mm. we were actually in the background of one of the promo shots. Well, what was crazy oh, really? too, I, I don't think we mentioned this, this was filmed in the backyard of one of our board members homes. Oh, well, yeah. So also that. just those behind the scenes, like, you know, taking care of the board member's house and yeah. <laughs> making sure yeah. everything's put wow. back where it needed to go, yeah. It was it was really an amazing experience, but it, it didn't come without its like worries and anxiety. And then telling the community too. So this is another step too. Big stories, whether mm -hmm. it's local and it's a sensitive one, or national and it's good, or whatever this case may be, we told our staff and community first. Okay. So they're not learning about what we're yeah. going to be. We're going to be on Diane Sawyer as they're sitting in the living room watching yeah. it so they knew ahead of time this is we're going to be on this is our reason why we did it and so they had some understanding of it so they weren't surprised we often will notify you know all school districts and school pr folks you know our staff and communities of when things we think are negative are coming out or hey staff this is happening but even in positive situations if you can especially big it's good just to give them a notification that this is happening. That's huge, and I, and I think that kind of segues us into something I want to ask you about, Amber, but it's your local community and your local media. I mean, Diane Sawyer, she moved on. The instant that interview was over, she was on to the next story. So you're, when you're having these things, these national or even international attention, you, you have to really be aware of your, your local community, your local media, because everyone in that group will still be here tomorrow. When the, when the national media pulls out and is on to the next thing. So uh, good point on that and, and making sure that people know that this is coming down and maybe your why. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about like, I know Amber, we were talking about this the other day, but your, your local like cable news station and, and how maybe you work with them as well, kind of at hyper local level. Definitely, so one uh, news station that comes to mind is Spectrum Cable News. And so they are, they have, you know, they're single reporters. What's nice about working with them is it's just one reporter. So you're not having this big news setup. It's mm -hmm. this one person who's a pro um, at their core. They bring their own camera. They do their own setup. They set themselves up and do their own intro. It's, it's really so phenomenal cool. to watch in action. But these are reporters that don't necessarily maybe have too hard a pressing of a deadline, but they'll reach out to you because maybe they saw something on your social media, a tweet about a cool program, or 
once you establish those relationships with them that, you know, they see that you have good stories and good content, they'll reach out to you and say, hey, we're talking about the substitute teaching shortage. Um, we saw that you have this creative campaign going on. Can we talk with a potential substitute? Can we talk in, in, with somebody in your district? So being communicative and being responsive um, really helps. Um, and so we've, we've gotten great news packages out of that. That's cool. um, and it, it's just been something really neat to kind of see in action because they are solely focused on like the San Gabriel Valley, which yeah. Arcadia falls in. And so, yeah, just being very responsive to them and, and making things easy to access people and having people in mind mm -hmm. is very helpful with it, cultivating those relationships. Yeah, and you bring up two things that come to my mind is when I would reach out to reporters uh, and, and the local ones especially too, is I would reach out and pitch a story, right? I would always say, and I can connect you with the principal, with a couple of students, uh, with other people that can talk to you on this story. Um, so if you're interested in covering this, let me know and I'll get those interviews rounded up for you. You and Amber bring up a really good point. National Diane Sawyer, that's fantastic. There's millions and millions of viewers, but she's right. You're right. Your local is more important than national. It's your community. It's your staff. It's your students. It's your families. So while you get all prepared for national, do the same thing for local important interviews and build those relationships even more locally because that's your community. That's what your school is all about. It's so true, and we have to keep in mind that reporters need us. We need reporters. We need the journalists. We need them out there telling the story, but in a lot of ways, they need us more than we need them. Sometimes, it's a great point, because sometimes we think, so we're trying to get them to cover a story, mm -hmm. but it may be one of four stories they're covering that day. Yeah. So to folding back to our point we talked about earlier, districts that have communications professional that can help them like you said, setting up the interview. I already have two people to talk to, a third grader, two teachers, and the principal, mm -hmm. and I have their artwork, whatever it yeah. is, because they may have four other stories to go to. And if you make it easy for them, align the interviews, get them there, they may have time now to stop by your place and do a quick 10-minute B-roll, quick interview, and then go on to their three other stories. Mm -hmm. they, if anyone learns anything from this segment, yeah. Reporters' jobs, especially now. I haven't been in the business for a while. It was tough then. It is way oh, yeah. harder now. Um, they have a tough job, and they're like Amber said. They come. They're they're now filming. We used to call them one man bands, <laughs> MMJs. So now, even in LA, the second largest media market in the country, we have one man bands at network TV stations coming up, doing the shooting, doing the interviews, calling the produce, doing it all themselves as MMJ multimedia journalists. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you can help them with their job, aligning the interviews, have, you know, anything you can do in advance, giving them talking points, here's the information, here's the sheet, take it home, email it. Your likelihood of getting that story picked up is way higher the more you help them. You know, and that goes back to how we started, which was building the relationships, the rapport, you being efficient, having everything together. That gets you that attention next time they need a story or next time they need something, you're the one they're reaching out to. So it goes back to building those relationships, which also goes to your point right at the top. It takes years to do that. It does. Um, yeah. I, can't, I can't thank you enough, uh, both of you, for, for joining me here today and talking through this. I think it's a, a really critical strategy and tactics that schools and districts can really lean into. Anybody, for that matter, you know, private sector, your nonprofits out there to really lean in and try to get more positive media coverage. I think we shared a lot of strategies today that's really fantastic. Hopefully you found this helpful. I can't thank the two of you enough for taking the time with me to do this today. Lunch will be fine. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. We could talk about this for more it. and more. <laughs> yeah, thank absolutely. You. All right, that's it. Hey, if you like this, be sure to uh, stay tuned for more. Like, follow, share, comment, and we'll be back. If you have any questions for us, hit us up in the comments. We'll be happy to interact with you and engage with that. Uh, but uh, stick around. We've got even more planned in the future. Thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to jack brush. Yeah. Oh, please do. Please do. <laughs>